They contract with with providers like you see on the side of that bus. Okay, and then a little bit more locally. We have two variations here in the lot of Sacramento Regional Transit District buses. Here comes one though that is in service and it ends here. You'll see it pull up to this mini high platform if they have people that need the accessible exit. Path to progress. It is the path that takes passengers and, and the crews to their trains. At some point, this area is part of the Sacramento Valley Station master plan. One thing they ultimately want to do in this open space is build a mega transit center. Now don't get that confused with mega bus. It would include Flixbus, Mega Bus, Greyhound, Sacramento Regional Transit, Amtrak buses, and regional transportation service providers throughout the Sacramento area, like Placer County Transit, El Dorado Transit, Yuba Sutter Transit, and Roseville Transit commuter express buses. The hope is to have this all developed by the end of the decade. And how would the uh, $1.7 trillion infrastructure plan if i just laid out the build back better how would that help uh i, I know he's mentioned amtrak specifically by name um, how would that help uh of course across the country but uh how would that cl help working class uh jobs how would that help uh things like these projects uh so that we can modernize the rail system how would that directly affect uh, you know, this local area and revitalize this economy and this transportation system? So in, there, there's kind of two answers to that part of the question. So part of it, I'd have to defer to the cities and the counties. They probably have to uh, have grants managers and, and public works directors uh, conveniently, along with members of Congress, like in a station like this include Congresswoman Doris Matsui and Congressman John Garamendi would have to get together and, and apply for a competitive uh, federal uh, grant if one should become available to participate through, to, in the, to participate. In the build but back left better. If we yeah. do get that grant to build back better, commuters would have and riders in general, not just solely commuters. Riders in general would have a transportation hub in this place where you can have shopping, residence, uh, a major league soccer stadium over off of Ninth and Rail Yards Boulevard, just to the east of here, access to the Capitol Corridor, San Joaquin and Amtrak long distance trains, as well as the variety of Distance buses, like I mentioned in the past, Megabus, Flixbus, and Greyhound. It would be a, a meeting and gathering place of transportation services that would be unparalleled from any region there is in the country. So I know that Amtrak in particular is near and dear to Joe Biden's heart because he rode those trains as a single father 
uh, back and forth when he was a young senator uh, so that he could be home with his children. And the rail is personal when it comes to real life. So naming Amtrak uh, by name and including it in the Build Back Better plan with that $1.7 trillion that is not only going to rail, but to our tunnels, our bridges, our public infrastructure, our highways, our ports, uh, and all of the jobs. I think they estimated it's supposed to create 18.5 million uh, high-wage union jobs, uh, which is also near and dear to this heart, because we all know that Joe Biden is very pro-union, uh, and he's for the He's for the working class, he's for raising wages for the everyday American. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this is right up his alley. And this is, I, I think, exactly uh, where uh, you know, is a good place to start. So, let me show uh, Americans one example to how you introduce that. So, Joe rode the rails for 30 years from Wilmington to Washington. A two hour commute and a two hour commute, four hours each uh, each day. Just so he could be home with his boys and cook them dinner as a single father. Right here, we have an example in Northern California of a train that goes from major urban areas like Sacramento down to the heart of downtown Oakland at Jack London Square and the Coliseum Bay Area Rapid Transit or BART station. What this is, is very reminiscent in Northern California in trip time to what Joe Biden was taking for 30 years between Wilmington and Washington. And this corridor serves the city that's native to Senator Kamala Harris, his running mate. Senator Harris, and hopefully soon one day to be Vice President Harris, is rooted in Oakland. She is born there. A daughter and, of Oakland. And she is a awesome daughter of Oakland. Anytime she comes home, the, the young children always say, Mama La, and she will always remind people of that story. So what has been near and dear to Joe Biden on the Northeast Corridor, Amtrak's number one route by passenger number, this service shown here is very near and dear to the people of Northern California, like Senator Kamala Harris, and would be a perfect match for her here on the West Coast as what the Northeast Corridor was to Biden on the East Coast, making them the perfect running mates con connecting by Amtrak train routes. Literally. Yes, Literally. yes, yes. And this is kind of what prompted me as, as an Amtrak rider that there are many reasons I'm voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris ticket. But a picture like this is the number one reason. Uh, I really think that they are the transportation ticket for America. And nothing parallels that to any other ticket uh, on the ballot in U.S. history. the truth. So I've worked for one particular company for over 20 years now, and it is not in the area or arena of my love and my passion for transportation like this. Felt that people above me are going to look over me and give promotions to people who have been with the company that I'm currently with a promotion rather than me 
uh, even though they may not have been there or had the seniority in years of service like I have. Uh, Joe and Kamala, there is nothing I would love than to work for transportation, public transportation, and helping and assisting people that are not as aware of a system that they're about to use to see a person that has this near and dear to their heart in their passion. And I would love to work in the public transportation field, just helping people. Do you feel, and uh, I'm talking softly because I don't want my voice to overpower yours. Um, do you feel the way, you know, I know teachers uh, have been getting paid the same salary since 1996. I know that grocery clerks are making less now uh, than they were in the 90s. Um, do you feel like uh, you're being paid what you should be paid as a working class blue collar American? Absolutely not. Uh, and I can tell, I know you feel intimidated and we're gonna hide, we're not gonna say who your employer is because we wanna protect that. And, and we are very much against intimidation tactics uh, that, you know, Joe is trying uh, and it's in his plan that he's gonna try to crack down and close those loopholes. We lose $64 billion a year in unpaid overtime from companies that crush the little guy and weasel their way out of paying overtime or even time and a half pay. Uh, and it's the squeaky wheels that they punish the most. The people who, uh, you know, keep their head down and uh, never complain uh, and just take their tiny little paycheck uh, home with them. Uh, those are the people that you're talking about that, uh, <laughs> you know, they treat uh, better. Uh, it's the people who are barely scraping by on a very low salary uh, that, in all honesty, has not changed in 25 years. And, uh, and we need to fix that because just like Joe says, you know, you are America's backbone. The working class, the middle class, blue collar Americans, uh, you guys built this country uh, and we're not taking care of you. Uh, and that's something that has to change. So I think that you share the same views uh, and that we need to elect a president and vice president that are going to fight for the people and especially prioritizing the people on the bottom and prioritizing the people in the aspiring middle class uh, that are not being paid their fair value. Uh, they're being taxed more than the wealthy and the rich. Um, I have a feeling that you're going to tell me you probably paid more than $750 in federal taxes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I paid uh, uh, on my annual salary from 2019 before everything was falling apart with the global health pandemic. Uh, I filed with my direct accountant everything that came to me from HSA, uh, my 1099, and my W-2 uh, filed and got everything in on time. Uh, I paid more in my paycheck in taxes uh, that I was eligible for a refund in 2020. Likewise, I, um, I paid more these last three years in taxes. Uh, and I'm in the, I'm squarely in the working class now. Um, I used to be in the middle class. And uh, ever since Trump took office, I am squarely in the working class. I'm, I'm now on unemployment. Uh, my business has stopped completely. And we are just barely scraping by with a, a family of five. Um, and I had to pay taxes these last three years, uh, thousands of dollars that, uh, you know, it's the direct result of Trump's rich people first trickle down economics. And the problem with it is it is not trickling down to us. 
um, they're just keeping it. The, the rich, the rich and the wealthy are just keeping it. Um, so yeah, I, I want to thank you for that. Um, that was an emotional statement, and uh, I know what it takes to, uh, you know, to, to to have to be the one who steps up and says enough is enough. Um, and we thank you for that. Uh, it's important that America, uh, everyday, regular, uh, average Americans, speak up and let people know. You know, we're getting the pay. We're getting paid the same wages that we were 30 years ago. Um, so when Trump was doing, you know, what he thought was well, bragging about the stock market, even then, we were not getting anything out of it. Uh, even then, all of our tax credits, our deductions, uh, our cuts were gone. Uh, and we are footing the bill for the rich. So thank you, uh, you know, for that emotional, uh, very personal statement. And uh, uh, we appreciate you. All right, so what we are witnessing here is an inbound capital corridor train from the San Francisco Bay Area and Silicon Valley. Not so much the capital corridor, but this is what Amtrak and states call state-supported corridor services. What's really gonna get people in a lot of trouble this month in particular is the Amtrak long distance network. The long distance network is gonna go from mostly one train each day to one train three days per week. So every route is only gonna operate going in a certain direction at a certain station three days a week and you won't see that train going the same direction the other four days. Why is that? The lower ridership during the global health pandemic was a very big culprit to making this decision. Now, a lot of Amtrak riders are hoping that this is just a temporary decision, but another reason why we need the Biden-Harris ticket and a focus on transportation infrastructure as people are going to vote now through November 3rd is to get Amtrak back on track and provide them more than their needed fair share and provide Americans, especially in small towns that have no access to large airports, a very true alternative to the road and the highway. So that's why we need a very strong transportation infrastructure ticket to build our nation back better starting January 20th and beyond 2021. And thank you for this tour. Of course, it's wegotavoice2.com. If anybody would like to donate to help the movement, we are going state to state, interviewing several different people, uh, speaking to everyday American Joes, Janes, and Jacquelines as always. Uh, it's been a pleasure, like I said. Uh, what would you tell voters or even people that feel suppressed by voting? What is one advice that you would give to these people? Uh, if you really want to see a uh, change from your uh, uh, national government in Washington, D.C., all the way down to your backyard uh, and everywhere in between, you've got to vote. If you don't vote, you don't have a voice. And if you don't vote, you, can't, you cannot complain. 
about what's going on if you see something is still wrong. You've got to vote. And with the way people are taking this so seriously this year, you got to vote early. In the state of California, early voting at the 58 county elections and registration offices opens up Monday, October 5th and goes all the way till election night at 8 p.m. Pacific time, Tuesday, November 3rd. But don't wait till November 3rd. Skip the post office, skip the vote centers, and go directly to your voter registration and elections offices. Again, in California, there are 58 of them. And vote directly there and hand it over to a reliable person that is going to be doing the counting of your vote at those offices and those offices only. Trust me. And we're voting for Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Democrats down the ticket to make a change good for this country. That was amazing. Thank you so much for your time.